swords and stronghold are like two peas in a pod or peanut butter and jelly or even 100 mobility hunter and trials who only wears all black as fashion it's so common to see them paired up it only makes sense to follow the crowd as to how good they are strongholds in general are a niche but viable exotic that can make any sword in game a near unstoppable wall and if you're someone that enjoys swords like I do, then the idea of soaking up tons of damage while flinching is a very appealing thought. So here's today's video, dedicated to that cause of players, as swords in endgame are rare to see, but with stronghold and any sword of your choice, you can run GMs back to back with the setup and not break a sweat. On top of that, you'll be able to gain overshield at a rapid pace, tank damage, and act as a provoker for less heat on your teammates, and you can also gain back health at the right moment of blocking. All of this is just the icing on the cake. Now, before we head in, a word from our sponsor. AOA.com offers discounted silver for Destiny 2 users and players alike. Use my code to get 3% off. Now, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and a sub, as it really does help me out. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Coda Protector for the Wall of Dawn Defense and Defense option, and then the Overshoot option it provides for even more layer of protection while on the move. With Wall of Dawn present, I can use the super to further enhance mine and my team's damage by an extra 35% for the duration at last. This when used properly can buff you to singly handedly take out all types of champions, mini bosses and bosses within a few hits, and this will all depend on the sword frame used. Now, using an aggressive frame, for example, can take around 3 to 4 hits, fully comboed to destroy a champion once stunned. Using a vortex or adaptive frame can also pull off a 3 to 4 hit combo as long as some assisting damage perks are aiding you in this. This, alongside the guard types for the sword, will be the most important part of making the build sustainable for end game. You'll want a sword that has good guarding options, so that the moment you need to guard against one to more Bogratons, you can do so with ease. Although, with the help of Stronghold, this should be fairly simple for you to achieve for any sword equipped it. To play it safe, I designed the build to be able to soak up as much damage as possible while being heavily under attack, while also providing fallback options if such a defense fails. We have the defensive strike perk that will grant us an overshield the moment we melee in close range, which is handy for closing the gap while blocking just in case we get flanked or hit by an AoE attack. This is then supported by the Rallying Force perk that provides health upon mid hits, and Turn the Tide increases the duration of overshield for longer. Simply, the subclass is designed for nothing but defense in close range. And next, we then have the mod such as Protective Light for that last resort of defense if we hit critical health, alongside the Supercharged mod to increase the stack of resistance the mod will offer us. This doesn't really need to be added as protective light, without any further support is capable of providing the best defense at base form. Now I did this, simply because we had the room available to do so, and a Lucan Blade is also attached to the build to provide even more damage to the user, although this can be taken out to save on wasted orbs or power. You then lastly have the passive guard mod, which is a must for the build if you want total defense when surrounded. This is all you'll need for the survival part of the build. Now, it is recommended to push your strength stat up to at least 16 so you can make use of the subclass overshield, but I find that using the melee option in GMs are a bit risky at times to pull off, which is why I left my intellect stat at around 60 since we plan to make the most of our super. 60 to 100 is the sweet spot you'll want to aim for, but do make sure the basic stats are covered first before doing so. Now, weapon will be a bit of a hit and miss, as you only need perks that fit the objective of the Nightfall or mission you play in. So for this, I went with a setup that best complements the style of the build. For example, I have the Hailing Fusion Pulse Rifle with Wellspring and Pulse Monitor. A great 390 pulse that has fairly balanced stats and pretty good raw perks to pick and choose. Now, Wellspring being available in the weapon allows me to effectively use all my abilities as I see fit, and will then break down the ability energy gain to the lowest to monitor. Although low, this is fairly handy when you have the main base of the build completed and you just need something else to support the abilities in the main run. Pulse Monitor now is a great perk for when we take damage at continuous bases. With the rework, the perk fits comfortably with endgame content and has large presence than ever before. Secondary, I have the Glide Chasm Fusion with Substance and Reservoir Burst, and this setup is magnificent for taking out minor combatants in one full burst. 
Now, because of how the funnel combo works, each time we get an explosion to trigger, it will auto reload itself and pretty much create a constant explosion as long as it nets one kill. Something like this is useful against the main and minor combatants you face, as high level content sees the combatants less than weak and more of a threat when in groups. Of course, if you never got one in the end, then the plug one is still an option once in rotation, or to less so is a good choice if it doesn't break the game of course. I would also recommend you add in the Explosive Wallmaker mod or Element Armors mod to your gear if you have the room to, so you can produce worlds as you go. I only recommend this if you have the space to do so and got the main mods out of the way with first. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Crown Splitter Sword with Warpaw and Flash Counter with a heavy guard attached to the weapon. With the following combo, I can make a pretty lethal close range setup that allow me to gain back health via Stronghold, apply a disorientating effect on combatants the moment I block, and do some hefty damage while also being able to block for an impressively long time. The only downside to the sword is how slow it hits, and I mean it hits really slow, which is where you'll want to have a secondary sword as backup. Now, the Laman Exotic Sword is a perfect sword to equip, as it has all the pros you want, but hits much faster than normal. Depending on what is required, carrying both weapons can allow me to melt through enemies with sheer force or block with sheer adversity, and honestly, both options are great as you're going to need them no matter where you end up in. Now, remember, Sword choice is down to you, so you don't need to have what is shown to be as effective as possible. Any sword of your picking is available to go ahead and use. For the stats, our main focus is intellect, as honestly everything else will either slowly come to us, or is covered by the subclass itself with the many buffs provided. For example, intellect at 60 is a good spot for passively gaining super over time, though having it a lot higher is also beneficial if you have the ability to do so. Don't fret now, as you don't need to aim for 100 if you don't have the ability to do so. Just focus on the main stats at hand and then see what room is available to flex around with. A great way to recover quick super is to apply the hands on and ashes to ashes mod via the solar helm. Since both stats are in their 40s to 50s and you have mods such as Wellspring available to further aid an area, you'll have no problem with being able to get your setup and super in no time. Now, yes, I am aware that my melee stat is very low, but as mentioned before, I don't want to heavily invest in the stat too much since the higher level of difficulty we go, the higher it then becomes to pull off a successful hit at times. Yes, we have the defensive option available, but when you have a sword with max guard and defensive available, and you close the gap, do you really want to risk everything for a single punch? The answer is no, no matter how titan you are. I'm also aware that my resilience is at 70, but this is because of my armor stat rolls I have, which is generally out of my own control. Although, this is useful as an extra layer of protection for allies if things do become bad as you can put up your barricade. Ideally, try and aim for 60 as going higher isn't really that recommended. Leftover wise, we have taken charge for becoming charged with light, although this can be changed to elemental charge if you plan to use wells instead. We then have Disrupting Blade for our sword, but only for Legendary Sword or swords that don't have the Eccentric Anti Barrier ability attached. Then we have Sword Scavenger, which is available, so we get more sword ammo reserves when available. The same way we have Fusion Scavenger as well. And then lastly, we have the Weeping Wallmaker mod that allows us to produce wells via kills the moment we proc our class abilities. Now, as we've covered the main topics of what makes a setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have minor strength, ashes to assets, hands on, and supercharged mods. Arm, we have disrupting blade and taking charge mods. Chest, we have minor strength, because of dampener, arc resistance, and lucent blade mod. Leg, we have strength, fusion scavenger, sword scavenger, and protective light mod. Mark, we have minor recovery, passive guard, and reaping while maker mod. So the build within itself is pretty strong even without the use of mods or super involved, as the stronghold in its own design could turn a sword into an offensive and defensive option. Now the downside to using the build and sword in general is how it can't survive against multiple hits from multiple combatants at once, as it is limited in how much damage it can sustain. Against one target for example, your health will literally not move, and if it does then it's at a really slow snail pace. This can be said the same for two or three combatants at once. 
The moment you start to hit 4 plus, and that's where the issues start to rise and you start to lose health at a steady pace. And then from there, if you're surrounded, then your health literally becomes non-existent. And I wanted to cover this part earlier as I want players to know that the build is capable of holding its own, but you must be aware of how much damage you can take. We have all the defensive options available to enhance our survival, and even using stasis for that extra resist effect does show promise for the user. But you're not invincible against the army of Thrals or Drex, or Overload Captains. They just need to bombard you enough for you to lose your grip, and that's it. Master tier content is the highest I would recommend you guys to give the build a try in. GMs are possible, but tricky, but generally possible if you don't have a well coordinated team to pull this off. But it's not all doom and gloom, as I wouldn't have shared the build in general. The build is fantastic at taking on singular targets and then destroying them in a few hits, but not only that, you can absorb their attack pretty well and regain your health back if you block at the right timing, which to be fair is pretty easy to pull off. In many situations, you can use the defensive option to absorb damage while you recover your teammates who are down, or you can use it to provoke combatants to focus on you while your team gets the breathing room they deserve. I've gone face to face with a legend to master level overload captain and I've been able to keep up with their attacks, stun them and then finish them with a full combo from my crown splitter, which I've managed to get around 80 to 85k in one heavy attack. Now that's a lot of damage against a single champion, but they deserve it since no one likes them in general. And this can be done with other swords of your choosing, not just crown splitter. I just chose the crown splitter because I like big damage in general. You can use these serial scars for example for its castle frame design so you can do continuous damage from a distance or you can use the Zephyr sword with cold steel to freeze your targets for even more breathing room. You're generally not limited down to one thing. You have all the options available people to use at your disposal. So overall of the story, Stronghold is amazing and sword builds in general such as these can do fine work in endgame content as long as you don't get too crazy and take on more than you can choose. Generally have fun guys as Witch Queen is around the corner and I'm pretty sure we'll get a lot of work to deal with. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig the type of stuff link is down below. Once again thanks for stopping by I'll see you on the next one.